and welcome back to Why This Film, the podcast where we reach back into your childhood, pluck out a movie, give it a rewatch and have a chat about it. I'm Emily Slade and welcome back. You watched it so many times before and now you're gonna watch it again. But it's been so many years since you last saw it and now you show it to your friends and they're like, what? What am I watching? Why? The- what? Is what? This? Why? Why, Why this, this film? film? And I'm joined today by Naomi. Hello! Hello, darling. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm absolutely brilliant. I'm really happy to be talking to you. I love this show so much. So let's get it. I love it. Thank you so much. You're such like you're such a supportive fan. I'm so happy to like finally bring you on here because I know you've been trying to come on for a while. I've been like, oh, I'm just so busy. Flick hair, flick hair. Um, but we're finally here. It's so exciting because the movie you have chosen is Doom 2. It came out in 2006. The IMDb breakdown. Mr. A, a fearless thief, steals valuable artifacts and teams up with the girl he is attracted to, but who cannot be trusted. Close on their heels are three police officers trying to apprehend them. Why this film? So, I mean, on a personal level, like I mixed and I grew up with so many different cultures in my house and in my area. So like Bollywood has been a huge part of my life since I was a child. Um, and in terms of like a greater level, if I divorce myself from that as an actress and someone who loves film, like when I tell you this film was lightning in a bottle when it came out, it was huge. Like it's still today. I think it's still like the 12th highest grossing Bollywood film wow. of all time. It is massive. And it just was, even if you watch the film, regardless of whether you like it or not, like stylistically with the casting, with the music, it all really comes together really, really well. So it's just a fun little joy ride, which we need right now more than anything. Oh my God, it's so fun. So um, listeners of the show may know I've done Lagan in the past, um, which I loved. And I think as when I watched it, I was like, God, I really need to watch more Bollywood. Cause I think I watched Bride and Prejudice when I was in uni and I was like, eh, and just sort of wrote Bollywood off. And then I was introduced to Lagan, which was like a big dramatic, like Oscar epic type movie. And I was like, um, oh my God, this is incredible. Like, why don't more movies just break into song and dance all the time? Like, what, what is happening? Um, so then when you said Doom 2, I was really excited because I was like, oh yes, finally, more Bollywood. And I was reading the plot and I was like, oh, okay. So it's sort of like a like a crime caper. Like, I don't really know. And I couldn't really <laughs> gauge much from the poster. And I was like, okay, okay, we'll see what's going on. I had such a good time watching Isn't this Isn't it great? It's it's on Amazon Prime. Go and watch it right now. You don't need to see Doom 1, but I will be going back and watching Doom 1, but it doesn't have these two actors in it, so I may just watch this one again because it is just incredible. And like I joked before we came on the air like where was this movie when I was a teenager? Oh, if I'd have had this when I was like 14, I don't know. I think I might have become a different person entirely because it was, it's just so up my street into like the main characters are basically the villains. Oh and, yeah. Like, I love that. <laughs> they're the most attractive people. You oh good Lord. Ever seen in your entire life. And they're like playing basketball in the rain. And I was like, is this no. war? Like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> like should this be this attractive is this legal like oh my gosh so let me tell you something horrific russian who is the star of this movie and i mean we can kind of go into a conversation about who's the protagonist and antagonist because i mm. have thoughts yes. but um he really is especially at that time was such i mean he still is i mean he's still one of the biggest stars in bollywood and he's definitely as you've seen in the film one of the best dancers in bollywood oh for my sure god for sure like but um, he had just come off of doing Krish, which was the first kind of Indian superhero movie. So he was still kind of riding on that wave. And then you put him in this movie, which is already a successful franchise. And he's playing this sexy kind of like Thomas Crown, Robin Hood meets Danny Ocean-esque character. And he is just, every person I have shown this movie to has walked away saying, I want that man to have my children. Oh and my I, God. I really can't complain. <laughs> I can't I have to agree. Genuinely, I like... But oh, honest, like he skydives in. I mean, I mean, let's just get into the opening scene. We're on oh, it's 2006, and we're on a train in the middle of the Nairobi desert. Yep, we're in the middle of the desert, and there's just a train, just a freight train on this line. And we, we go in, and the Queen of England is there <laughs> with Harry 
as like a seven year old and they're celebrating Harry's birthday. That's just wonderful. There's someone that comes from England, obviously, like, you know, the royal family. I love seeing how they're depicted by other um in other films and other cultures and you know what I realized with that is that Harry would have been like 20 in 2006 (laughs) I don't know which alternate universe this is in honestly it's so funny and she's like a fun loving like grandma that's like let's play pretend to steal the crown jewels on this train like it's just immediately it set the tone for this movie and I was like oh this is gonna be fun oh I'm Mm -hmm. gonna have a good time um and he's sky dark he like yeah it skydives he jumps out of a moving like helicopter onto this moving train in the middle of the desert and it zooms in on his face and I was like oh my god I'm in love (laughs) what is this where did this person come from why haven't I and like if you haven't seen a picture of him I was gonna say he looks a little bit like Dan Stevens but I would more say that Dan Stevens looks like him because this man is superior in every (laughs) single way and he disguises himself as the queen of england he steals the crown of the crown jewels and he's on top of this moving train and he rips the queen's face off his and you get to see his lovely face again and then he like escapes in the middle of a desert on a moving train and i was just like you would never get this in the like west in like american cinema they would never go this far and it is to their detriment like they suffer because they don't push this they don't do this I was and then and then we go into like a sewer basement where everyone's in like cool clothes and they're doing like the theme song and they're all like dancing and I'm like Mm. Fast and Furious would be so much more interesting if they broke into song and dance more often. Do you know what? The Fast and Furious movies are so like bombastic. I think apparently they're going to space in the next one. I honestly wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> to be honest. I love it though. I think that's the wonderful thing though, because even in that opening scene and to, to the opening number, which is the Don Machale song, you immediately know what you're getting. And it kind of, especially the song, it kind of frames itself as like a prologue because you know, you're know you know you're not going into this for like Ibsen level realism. You're yeah. going into this for escapism. And stylistically with that opening scene, you know what you're getting and you're just, you're just in it and you're having fun and it's the action and the adventure of it. And yeah, I just think it's, you know, it's designed to make you feel good. And I think that's what it does. 100%. And it, the genre that it calls itself is like comedy action. Um, if you were to think of something like that, um, that would come out of America or even England, you would think more something starring Will Ferrell, where he's mm. like a clumsy super, like Johnny English, I guess. Oh but God. <laughs> which you know is a fine film as like that's comedy action but this Mm. is comedy action where it's legitimate action Mm. and legitimate comedy like coming together and it's just but like what's wonderful about Bollywood I've found in my very rare viewings of it is that they are able to mix so many genres together but they're able to do it with such style and class Mm. and when they say you're getting that genre you do get that genre and you get that genre properly Mm. and the mixture of it just adds so much to the film. Like it just weighs it and makes it um, worth more. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Well, the thing is this type of film is technically classified as a masala film. So a masala film is a film that has is incorporating different genres. So like a really good film as well for that is a film called Om Shanti Om with Shah Rukh Khan, where it's like this kind of paranormal uh, Bollywood satire meets romantic drama meets reincarnation plot like it's all over the place but it works so well within the frame and I think as well that's you know the culture you know Indian culture is bright it is vibrant it is colorful it is full of life and wonder and it has all these I think one of the things I really love about this is it kind of deconstructs I think a lot of the myths that I think the West still kind of has about India you know like Indian women are submissive Indian men can't be sexy you know India you know all the dramas are like really kind of big busty romantic dramas and no this is this is such an accessible film for anybody and it's you know and the characters are all you know they're all confident they're all successful in their career and what I love is that they're kind of this interesting balance of kind of Indian ideals but with you know with the kind of modern contemporary flavor as well you know um it is very very different from Lagan but I think that's the wonderful thing you get that spectrum oh for sure for sure you know and that's what Indian film is I mean we we shouldn't treat any kind of Eastern or foreign quote unquote film with any less due diligence than we would, you know, a French film or a Spanish film, you know, 
their multi-layered, multi-faceted experiences. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I wonder where the sort of um, thing comes from, because you're right, like you, you very rarely see the Bollywood movies, which is, isn't it the biggest film industry in the world, Bollywood? Yeah, it is. And like, you never see them contenders for Oscars or BAFTAs or anything like that. Mm. You, I think Bride and Prejudice might have snuck in. It like came over and was quite big in the West, but only because it was based on a well-known Western book or whatever. Um, and honestly, they're they're so good they're not mm. and like I, people may get duped over by the bright colors or the song and the singing and the dancing which again is insane because in the early 2000s when this came out the west was having a renaissance of musicals with moulin rouge sweeping the oscar then chicago sweeping the oscar and so True. they were fully in that vibe so i don't know why this never came over in a bigger way um it absolutely baffles me i love the saturation of this movie they've it's it's like watching one of the um drew barrymore charlie's angels they've just yeah the color right up and i friggin love it because i'm so sick of watching movies especially action movies they tend to whether it's because they often use a lot of cgi so they have to like darken the screen so you don't notice that it's cgi or whatever but they're often so dark and dank and grim and just like badly lit um and this was just like boof like everything is bright colors everyone's wearing a different color and it's gorgeous and it's just so enjoyable to watch because you can see everything and you're right about the characters as well they're also individual and that but they're also fleshed out and mm. i really got the so there's a police officer jay um and then he i think he's just um allowed a companion ali to be a police mm. officer as well. So you think they're going to be the like, so we'll go into the main character, who's the main character of this movie. So you think they're going to be the main characters because um, they, from what I understood, they appeared to be the main characters of the previous movie yeah. and this is their sequel. But the first character we meet is Mr. A, which in most movies would indicate, even though it's a sort of prologue, that he is the main character. Mm. And to be honest, I was rooting for the villains in this movie. Absolutely, completely. Well, the thing is, I've just started doing this online writing course where we have to break down like the components of a plot and the film. And this is when it, and I did Doom 2 for it. And this is when it really hit me that A is the main character. And I don't know if it's because, you know, Horithic is such a big star and they wanted to push that, but it's like every plot beat, the inciting action, the act one twist, it all happens to or by A. Yes. So, and he's the one who gets the character arc. He's the one who develops by the end of the story. And to be really honest, you know, when I was talking to people about it, I think a big part of it is he's, I think he's an interesting character, but I also think as well, I don't know, watching him from modern day, I think there is a little bit of reticence towards the police and the way that Jay, I think, can sometimes be very trigger happy and very sort of, you know, very, very aggressive and mm. almost violent, especially towards Ali, who's supposed to be his friend. Oh, and I cannot, cannot stress enough that there is only one victim in this movie and that is Jay's pregnant wife. Oh my <laughs> who God. disappears from the plot. She just, she just vanishes. Honestly, I thought the same and I was looking it up and she seemed to have been a character in the first movie that I assume yes, hooks up with Jay at the end of that movie. So she's his wife. She's, she's married nice. to him in the first film. And then nice. she's, a fairly larger role but in this movie I don't know if it's because the actress didn't have time but she's very I think she's only in that one scene or two scenes she's literally in like two scenes at the beginning and I was like we'll go back to Jay and we'll see his newborn baby and then that will be the end of the movie nope. nah <laughs> <laughs> same with the like weird relationship that he has with um Shanali they introduced this female cop who like knew Jay from college. And the, there's all this talk of like, oh, are you going to have an affair because your wife's pregnant and he gets on really well with this woman and it's all a bit ooh la la. And then we just go to Rio de Janeiro and yes. her twin sister instead. <laughs> Do you know when I was younger? Do you know when I was younger? And this is credit to Pipasha Basu, who's an incredible actress. I didn't realise it was the same actress. I thought it was someone completely different. I I had that thought. It was only because I was on IMDb and she's got like Shona Lee slash Mona Lee yeah. that I was like, oh, it is the same actress because you're right. She's completely 180 of the character that we've just come from and not yeah. in a 
basic way she's really thought about who this character is compared to who mm. the previous character was and like yeah like her hair is a slightly different color and she wears different color like types of clothing and stuff but she moves differently and she talks yeah. differently and like it really is testament to her acting that they that it's a dual part well I think the thing as well with Shanali and Monali is Shanali and Monali I love their names I love <laughs> like you said I love I love the transformation I love it when actors play two characters on the screen mm-hmm. and you see the physical difference but there's still little traits that make you see they're related yes. um but one thing I did think about was with Shanali I don't entirely know why she's in the plot <laughs> to be super honest I don't really feel she affects anything but I was but I was talking about it the other day with some friends when we watched it I think the reason Monali is in there and probably why they had that dual role is Bollywood and Indian cinema as you know is very conservative and, you know, even the kiss, which happens later between A and Sineri, that caused quite a stir when it came out. It, it was quite controversial. Me, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do, didn't it for everybody? I mean, they're right. gorgeous, gorgeous together. Oh, goodness. But um, I think, you know, if you take out that character of um, Monali, the sister, um, you have a relationship between A and Sineri, which is very, very sexually charged. Mm-hmm. And that wouldn't, I don't think that's, that would have been right or appropriate for the movie. So I think by giving Ali a love interest, it gives him something to do because to be honest with you, he's not really framed as being a threat. It's all J and A and that's it. Yeah. And it also kind of still telegraphs to the audience that A and scenario are falling in love, but you also, you know, have the, you keep the innocence there and you yeah. keep the kind of lightness because yeah. it, those stairs alone between A and scenario could like incinerate a screen. Oh so goodness. You know. Like genuinely like I've not seen that much chemistry since I can't even tell you when I think that's a really good point yeah it keeps the sort of light-hearted relationship going and and you're rooting for him you know because he wanted to get with Shanali who has this again weird who knows if he ever that's a whole other movie if Jay and Shanali oh. hook up like who actually knows if that ever happens <laughs> um because yeah just sort of halfway through we're just sort of like okay we're bored of them we're just going to focus on these two great people now um <laughs> which is in Brazil because, to be honest I only noticed it when it finished I was like oh yeah whatever happened to that pregnant wife because for a while I was like oh she's my favorite character because she's really funny and like this is really nice to see um but then I got so whisked up in the romance of the villains that I was like mm yeah this is great just keep showing me them like but are they villains though because that's the whole conversation oh. are they villains because I mean I would argue so there was an interview I think it was with the screenwriter he directed he screen wrote the first two wrote the first two and then he directed the third and one of the things he was saying is that Sineri is actually framed as a hero because she is a girl from the working class and you see that in the way that she kind of talks and the way she presents herself and she's a girl who's aspiring to more and A again is a character who has arc and he has a motivation and he you know, he's not, he's not a villain in the sense that he's not malicious. Like he's not stealing because, you know, he wants to kill somebody or anything. He's stealing because he's an artist and he's framed very romantically, you Mm. know, in that sense. So, and then you compare him with Jay, who again, like I said, is very aggressive and who is very kind of rigid and very much filling the, the cop role. Mm -hmm. And I, I honestly do think the movie makes A and Sineri the, the protagonist. I don't think it is Jay and Ali's movie. And in a way, I think this movie is the best of the three because of that, because it still has that balance. The first movie, it's very focused on Jay and Ali and developing that relationship. Mm-hmm. But I think, in my opinion, to the detriment of the villain played by John Abraham. And then in the third movie, it's the complete opposite problem where <laughs> there's so much emphasis on the villain played by Amir Khan. Well, villain. How can I say it without spoiling it? Yeah, we'll say villain. Okay. Villain played by Amir Khan that Jay and Ali are very almost like supporting characters in this plot which is focused on them so I think this movie gets the balance right but I do but I'm with you I do think A is I think the movie deliberately says A and scenario are the heroes Mm -hmm. are the anti-heroes you know and there is this there's this sort of like morality question going on within the plot because several times you notice like for example uh, Sineri's having that conversation with Jay when she's in Brazil and she's sort of betrayed a and she's like you know you're gonna honor our deal and let me go and he's very kind of shady about it and she says you know a may be a thief but at least he's honest you're a cop and you're not and it's sort of like where is the gray line and I think that's sort of very an interesting argument to present in a film like this definitely it's really interesting and I think the reason the film is so intriguing and the main characters are so compelling is because they are anti-heroes it's Batman and Catwoman all over again it's like Mm. these people that are willing to ride the law um opposite these people that 
you know are the law essentially mm. and like that's more fascinating because then the choices and the stakes are much higher because it's like are you going to throw it all away for the next big thing or are you truly in love and like why are you breaking the law and like how did you end up in these situations and is it through any fault of your own or was it choices was it circumstances and that's a lot more compelling than the just sort of like generic evil person that wants to take over the world or the generic hero that is just gonna um be super trigger happy and I think Shauna Lee as well I was I was really shocked the amount of um shots we have of her shooting she's like oh, introduced God. at a gun range the last time we ever see her before like she's in the hospital is like at a gun range like she's just constantly shooting she's const she's like here's a gun gun is guns never lie like guns are my best friend like guns are great like we should just kill everyone <laughs> I was like bloody very hell. much like you guys vibes in fact <laughs> and the thing is she, she's very she doesn't put up with any of Ali's like because Ali can kind of Ali is kind of interesting because you sort of view Ali, he's meant to be the comedic side character, but there are times when he is a little, especially post Me Too, he is very kind of in your face. And, oh my goodness. And yeah. she doesn't put up with any of it. Like she, yeah. every time he gets close to her, she's like, gun over here, you way. over there. Yes. And I think he, it's so fascinating. It's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And then, and then to give this much more easygoing twin sister but they're not making the statement of like look this girl is way more chill and therefore like Ali's gonna be with her because like you just need to be chill like they're they're not rewarding Ali they're just being like you will find someone that thinks the same as you you're you mm. don't have to go because he was trying to go out of his way to be different to force her to like him Mm. Um, he even says it he's like don't worry sweetie I'll make her fall in love with me so she doesn't have an affair with your husband mm. and that it was always tinged with that whereas when he meets um her twin sister it's very much like they're on equal grounds when they meet and um they they have a genuine equality with their relationship yeah. and so he's not rewarded for being a creep which is good <laughs> yes you get a love story you get yeah. a love story <laughs> everybody gets a love story <laughs> Um, the love story between the main two there, I'm just going to call them the main two now. Oh yeah. <laughs> God, where do we even begin? Begin. Like, I mean, I think we all learned a valuable lesson that you can find true love in a club. Yes. I mean, that's all you need to do really. Yes. <laughs> where was that when we were in high school? <laughs> right? When we were going to clubs, like none of that. Um, all, all of my notes by the end are just hearts. So right near the end, we're skipping around a bit, but it's fine. Right near the end, um, they have a whole, God, I mean, that whole third act is just so incredible. He's found out that she's betraying him and like mm -hmm. um, working for the cops, but he genuinely is in love with her mm -hmm. and asks her to kill him they play this warped game of like Russian roulette where she proves to him but it's it sounds when I'm saying it and on paper it sounds so silly but it really isn't I was mm. fully invested I mm. genuinely thought at any point either of them would get shot in the face oh my gosh yeah which is so um perfect because then when neither of them are shot in the face and they confess their love for each other and then they have that uh illegal kiss oh yeah the <laughs> it's like taken to court because it's so controversial um you just you're with them for the rest of the movie and you're just well like, I think that's the benefit of it because you know the concept on paper is so like you said bombastic and silly but I think what really sells it is that every actor in this movie aside well I think Uday Chopra as well as Ali but he's obviously there as comedic relief but he commits to that comedic relief every actor in this movie they're not hamming it up they're committing to it and they're taking it seriously yeah. and they're working on that connection. They're not, they're not phoning it in just because of the genre. And because of that, you feel invested. And with that Russian roulette scene, you know, it is very tense and you do sort of cringe, especially because it's been foreshadowed so many times in the plot, like, oh, he'll kill you. Oh, he'll do this. Oh, he'll do that. Even though we never actually do see him kill anybody. Yeah. Um, but I think again, it's that way of adding tension and it ramps up the stakes even more. And so by the end of the movie, when you're going into that final heist and that final climax, you are on the edge of your seat because you know that there's so much more now for these characters than just, you know, 
I want to steal this and we can go away and have money. It's like, there is someone I am literally willing to die for in this situation. And that's something that even in some action movies today, we don't get that level of nuance and depth. So there is a lot, a lot to appreciate in that. Yeah, it's so true. And just adding that additional layer, just as you say, makes all of the action and the tension so much higher and much Mm. more enjoyable to watch and fully, fully invested. And um, I didn't know where this movie was going. I couldn't figure it out. And so they build it up and built it up that like, if you love me, you will kill me. And it's all very warped and romantic. And even as I was watching it, I was like, no, don't fall into that Romeo and Juliet trap. You're better than this. And then it builds to this brilliant fight scene on top of a waterfall. Like it's just amazing. And she turns up and I genuinely, I was like, oh no, is she gonna like betray him again? Or like, is she gonna be killed? And then he's like, if you love me, you would kill me. And she shoots him and he falls off the side of the waterfall. And I was like, no, God damn it. Like I knew this probably had to happen because in theory he's a criminal and has to pay for his crimes, but with his life, like come on, just go round up all the coins he's stolen and save him. (laughs) <laughs> and then there's like in that very brief sort of like six months six months later shot my brain was like come on like please just have like a, a like a post credit scene maybe that's like um she goes to his body afterwards and he's still alive and like she cares for him and like they're living in a cave somewhere or like like they just they just have to be together like this can't end like this this is so so sad like please please just like somehow explain to me that they're okay. And immediately after they're like, hey, don't worry about it, they're okay. And I was like, yes! yes! <laughs> because you root for them, you root for them. I mean, Ashwarya and Heretic, I think have beautiful chemistry. I mean, they've done a couple of films before. They've done Jodha Akbar, which I really recommend if you've got it on Netflix. It's about a, um, it's about one of the Mughal emperors and his wife. And it's a whole big thing because he was a Muslim and she was a Hindu and that caused a lot of controversy. It's a beautiful movie. I really recommend that. But it's like, not just obviously the physical compatibility because my God, <laughs> my God. <laughs> but I think even the way the characters are written, they make each other better. And that's what you want in any relationship, be that in a rom-com, in an action movie, because she is very like, you know, she is very working class. She is very kind of scrappy and bubbly and he's very composed and very together. And like, you see it in the scenes in Brazil where like she wants to eat a burger and he wants to eat a salad and he's on the computer teaching her things and he's she's making him dance and things like that. And so you really get this sense that this is an established relationship and yeah. there is a connection here and they're gonna come out of this on the other side, better people. And I think uh, without giving Dun one and Dun three away, I think, these characters earn their happy ending. I think you feel like that, that there is, you feel happy with that anymore. Very much so. And even even when it looked like everything was fine and then Jay obviously hunts them down and finds them in, the, cause they're basically, it's adorable. They're running a restaurant. He's the chef and she's the waitress. And I genuinely want that as my life. <laughs> um, and, uh, it's genuinely really tense. Like you have this wonderful relief that he's alive. And what was kind of great was that they didn't bother going back and explaining. Like there was mm. no sort of like rewind of like, and the fake bullets and he knew to like, blah, blah, blah. You just assume like you've seen them jump off cliffs a million times before. You've seen them shoot and know how to get bullets out of guns a million times before. So you can put it all together and you don't need to be shown that. So then you can have a wonderful application of imagination as to how they managed to get away with it. Um, and then Jay hunts them down. And I was like, fuck, no, like, are they gonna go to prison together? Because like, at least they're in this together. Um, And then he lets them go. And like, I was really, again, it was usually when you watch movies, especially genre movies, and like, you can't help if you watch a lot of them to sit there and just try and like second guess what's gonna happen because Mm -hmm. that is part of the enjoyment as well. But I was so swept up in this movie. I was just going along with the ride. And I was like, oh my God, are they going to go to prison? Are they going to be set free? Like, what's going to happen? And he was like, to me, both of you are dead. So of course this place is open. Come on in, tourists. I was like, oh, he's going to let them. He's going to let them. He's going to let them in together. It's rich, 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 rich. just love. Because at the end of the day, love wins. Who cares if it's a 180 on your character? Love wins, everybody. Make it happen. <laughs> it's like, you taught me a valuable lesson, which is again, why I thought we would see him be reunited as a very happy family man with a newborn child because he's learned these lessons from this relationship that he's witnessed over these few months but no 
Swingies out the movie. <laughs> I mean, he was having like a, a, if not a physical affair, an emotional affair oh, with a colleague. I don't think sure. Jay is the moral, <laughs> is the moral <laughs> high ground in this movie. Not at all. He's so grumpy. Like oh, his no, no. singing voice is like a much more gruff, deeper. It always took me mm. aback every time he sang. Um, the song and dance pieces. Oh, oh, we can go in. They're so, so well choreographed. Good. They are brilliant. They are absolutely brilliant. Some of my favorite music in a Bollywood film. Honestly, they're brilliant. I went to have a shower after I watched it, and I was like, Spotify, Doom Two, let's go. Like. <laughs> dangerous in the shower because I definitely ended up slipping about but it's like it's just it's so good and I know it's obvious to say like musicals do this all the time where they use songs to progress character development and arcs and plot points but because you don't see it in non because I wouldn't call Bollywood a musical in that no. sense it's its own thing and I'm just like please can we get and I know there's a whole cinema of it out there that we shouldn't have to recreate it just for the western audience we should just be able to play the original movies over here but you know what these people are like um mm. and like why don't they why don't they try the 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 structure of it and just make like an oscar worthy brilliant genre movie and put songs in it but it's not a musical but i think that's also about the culture as well though because again Bollywood is reflective in many aspects of Indian culture, you know, in that sense of the community and music and dances. So even down to like Hinduism and the religions and everything, it is so much part of the culture. And so I think that style works because it is their story and their That's narrative the same true. way that, you know, Western musicals like Phantom or Moulin Rouge, the way that they construct the musical numbers work for them. But I do agree in the sense of like, there should be joy and buoyancy, but honestly, the solution to it is just continue to promote international film and thank god for the rise of streaming services because we are getting this influx of music and film and tv and other media from all over the world like i mean the biggest pop band of last year was a korean band yeah you know so there is so much more uh globalization happening that i think we can there is a space now more so than there was in 2006 when i was growing up to appreciate bollywood and indian cinema for what it is and to celebrate it yeah and so but yeah, the musical numbers in this film are amazing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Because also like they'll turn around and be in like a completely different like costume and they'll always have like a, a huge ensemble of dancers behind them. And mm. I just find myself gripped to their like body movements and the, the athletic professional way that they like move and interact with each other and on top of that they're singing and you know it's like they're real singing voices so it's like yes Dan Stevens you're hot but like this guy can also dance and sing and well it's playback so it's another singer singing and they're they're oh, miming so it's a playback yeah. singer but they might they but it's still although I, I think everything can sing I think he's sung in something but they're all playback singers but completely to your point and what I love about that is in every song, like you said, you're getting, it's there to kind of supplement for the emotion. Yeah. But it's also, you know, they are really execute, really well executed pieces like Crazy Kiara, which is my favorite one in the whole bunch, where she wears Sceneri in the club yeah. and apparently with multiple outfit changes. Yes. Um, just, which is incredible. Like I will cosplay a Sceneri at some point in my life because those outfits are gorgeous. Oh my God. But, but you know, like, you know, it's a fun number and it's an accessible number. And at the same time, we know what, why this number is in here. It's not in here for a random reason. It's in here to connect how she and A go from being like, oh, I'm kind of attracted to you, but I, I work alone because I'm Batman, but a Bollywood version <laughs> to like, oh, wow, damn. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of feeling this. So I'm, we're going to go and yeah, we're, we're going to go partnership now. Be partners, <laughs> partners in life. <laughs> Oh, it's so cute. But like, it's still, it works for the plot and you're still swept up in it and you're still enjoying it. And it's, it's a really fun, it's a great number. I mean, out of all the songs in there, what one was your favourite? Genuinely, I loved the opening number. Yeah. It just, I was just like, oh yeah, Bollywood sing and dance. And the way it was in this like bizarre, like rent-esque sort of basement. And it's like 2006. So everyone's in the like, early 2000 type costumes where they're kind of like club wear that's kind of grimy but still kind of bright and just the whole aesthetic of it and the way that like 
the dance, the particular dance moves that they were using, just everything about it. I was just like, yes, 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 yes. But then they all have such wonderful things. Like I think they are meant to be at their school reunion when yes, you've got the like trio love song happening. Oh, the one at the like carnival where all four of them are coming together, which again, like you're looking oh, at it and you're that. like, why would these four people be in the same place at the same time and not interact? Like that doesn't make any sense plot wise, but it even makes it sense plot wise because you know that those two characters have already clocked each other and had a whole conversation and that mm. like everyone's aware of everyone in the vicinity, but they're all able to come together and sing this number about love. Absolutely. And, it's, and it's all character driven. That's the yes. thing. Like it's all... Every, like especially in that song that you talk about the Nagana, you know every single character is singing about their particular experience so like all the lyrics that ASC are about how don't trust anybody because he just found out Suneri's betrayed him and Suneri's singing love is like a fire and uh Jay is singing like who knows if we'll have this moment again being very cryptic like they're all working for the character and they're all stating where they are and I love it because like as an actor as you'll see as well as you are as well you know it's like the perfect scene because everybody's objectives are clear, but everybody's obstacles are there. And, you know, everybody's trying to use different tactics to intimidate each other and work each other out. And like sometimes A and Scenario are connecting and sometimes he's he's angry at her because he feels betrayed. And sometimes him and Jay are having a moment. And sometimes Jay's just like, Ali, shut up. Yeah, you know? it's, it's everybody's so working fun. in the scene. There's multiple layers going on. Like it's that's the thing about. Indian cinema it is rich it is complex there are so many layers going on here and yes. it's enjoyable oh it's so enjoyable. enjoyably complex it's so good it's so well done um I loved every single one of them whenever there was like a very obvious like lead-in line where it's like and we're gonna sing now and inevitably like someone turns around in a different outfit and the like music starts up I was like fucking yes like resettle yes. myself like let's go like it made me want to dance. It made me want to get up and just like try out some like moves. It's do it. Well, they move their body so wonderfully. And like, that's really interesting that you said they're dubbed over, which I respect and appreciate so much. The most recent thing of that is the, the Eurovision movie with Will Ferrell and Rachel McAdams. Oh, I loved it. I thought it was such so a great movie. And it's really pushed and made better by the fact that they go back to that 1930s singing in the rain. They, if you can't sing or you can't sing well enough, you're going to get dubbed. Like I'm sure Dan Stevens has a fine voice. I'm sure Rachel McAdams has a fine voice, but they dubbed them over with professionals. And the Absolutely. whole experience is so much better because you know, because you're listening to a professional singer song. And exactly. the ears of Tom Hooper's Les Mis and Emma Watson's Beauty and the Beast. I'm just so over it. I'm like, you had your fun. Can we please stop this now? Properly. Because it takes you out of it as well, because yeah. you're not able to get swept up in the story, especially with especially with Western musicals, where the music is so, so paramount to further the narrative, especially in something like Les Mis, where it's pretty much all sung through. Yeah. Because you're distracted by, you know maybe a note not sounding right or maybe you know or even just it might not even necessarily be that they're a bad singer their voice just doesn't suit who that character is and the way that that character is being presented to you whereas again like you said with Bollywood and with old musicals completely agree with you you know they find singers who work for the character and who will bring that kind of energy the character needs and I don't I don't think there's any shame in it no I don't think there's any shame in it whatsoever not at all. And I think perhaps there was, or it did become such, or like, you know, the whole plot of singing in the rain is like, let the real voice sing instead yeah. of dubbing the superstar. Um, but no, absolutely not. Like listening to the Eurovision and watching the Eurovision movie is made a million times better because you know that like, when they start to sing, it's going to sound amazing. And you're right. You're therefore not distracted by Amanda exactly. Seyfried going... <laughs> No, Although I do admit, I did love in Eurovision uh, the scene where they, um, where you have all the former like Eurovision acts come on, and it's just like, oh, it's uh, Kachita, oh, it's Lorraine, oh, yay, my childhood. The guy with like the violin that hasn't aged in like twelve years. Oh, like... I know, he looks amazing. He, they all look so good. You're like, oh, they look so good. It's so enjoyable, and like, yeah, and it's the same here where everyone sounds beautiful and they yeah. look beautiful. I mean, that. Um, what is that actress's name? I'm not going to be able to pronounce it. Um, who plays Suneri? Ashwarya Rai. Beautiful. Um, she 
is gorgeous. We, my friend has, uh, whenever we do like, let's go to YouTube and play some clips. She's always like, oh, oh, we should watch that one. Um, it's from Devdas. Is that how you say Ah, uh, yes, Devdas. Oh, so the, 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 yeah. Yeah, where she's got the candle that she's lit. The, because the, 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 the. Oh. Well, this is the thing. She is a phenomenal actress and she'd just come off doing Bride and Prejudice. Um, and she was told for this role she had to lose weight and she had to kind of study Catwoman from Batman, which you kind of see a bit in oh, her physicality yeah. a little bit. And, you know, again, she brings this really, she is beautiful. And that is, you know, a selling point. I don't think, I think there's sometimes a conversation in acting about, oh, you know, we shouldn't focus on the physical. And I completely agree. But I think sometimes if you have an actress who is incredibly beautiful, I think it's not, I don't think there's something wrong, which is why I love Bollywood, where they they don't hide that, but they yeah. don't use that as an excuse to substitute for talent. She exactly. is She is where she is today. And she is, I think she's still the biggest Bollywood actress in the world because she is phenomenally talented and to play that character who is sexy but also has to be really goofy and kind of bubbly it takes an actress who has considerable skill to do that and yeah. you know and I mean of course the camera loves her but the camera loves her in part because of her talent and exactly. she, she's so good in this and and yeah it's that it's that genuine willingness to act and not just like strut about in front of the camera yes. being gorgeous like she doesn't she doesn't let her looks do the job for her she also puts in the work and I really got that because yeah I'm used to seeing her in this clip from Devda so I'm used to, I've, I have seen her in Bride and Prejudice and like um she is completely different in all of them she has yeah. range I really got the like even with subtitles I really got the character coming through of the way mm. she constantly says like and eats burgers and stuff this sort of goofy character which is again was so lovely because she so easily could have been Catwoman and just been sultry and sexy and like called it a day but again because she has this added layer to her personality you root for their relationship mm -hmm. even more because you know that they're exposing their true selves to each other and they're real people exactly. and like yeah she's utterly gorgeous but you're right she's also a phenomenal actor and if she wasn't then yeah I don't think she necessarily would have gotten very far and it's and it's really good that you can, as you say, appreciate what she looks like. And you know as well that she's putting in so much hard work. And that Absolutely. She really is talented. Absolutely. And Same I think as him. well, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, like horrific, horrific. Like if you see his range, like watch any of the films he has on, on Netflix or anything, he can, he can really do it all. Like he is, I was saying to uh, my mum the other day, you know, this man should, I mean, he is a superstar in Bollywood. He doesn't need to come to Hollywood at all. None of them do. And none of them should because they're all wonderful in their field. But like, if he ever came to Hollywood, he would be probably one of the biggest actors in the world because he literally can do it all. And he, even as an actor in all of his work, he is so different. Like you have something like War where he's more kind of aggressive. And then Jodha Akbar where he's playing like this very Prince character and Gabi Kushi Gabi Gun, when, you know, all these wonderful, wonderful films. But the thing I really found interesting about uh, the way that the characters are written in this movie is there is an argument to be made that, you know, Bollywood as it's evolved, uh, you know, especially like when compared to Lagan, you know, we are getting a rise of non-residential Indians, NRIs in the world. And so, you know, we are seeing more films that are a lot more using a lot more English, you know, they're using a lot more kind of Americanization or Westernization. And you see that with characters like Sineri. But what I love is that you still, it doesn't feel like they're trying to appeal to a Western audience. It feels like it's something that's ingrained in these characters and this is the culture that they've been raised in because India is becoming a superpower in the world and you know it is this idea of like they're coming together and they're embracing these you know these western ideals but they're still keeping the essence of who they are still there because yeah. again like with the kiss and the way they interact it's sexy but it's not you don't feel like they're just going to jump all over each other no, I mean they should it's be a sex <laughs> scene as much as we would have enjoyed that Although we get the basketball scene in the rain, so we get pretty clear. sex scene. <laughs> and like, I think it's better than a lot of sex scenes I've ever seen in movies, to be fair, so. I mean, yeah, completely. Um, such a good point. Um, absolutely, like, I didn't feel like they were trying to emulate anything. It felt almost like they'd invented it. It was just, yeah. it worked so well in what they were doing. Um, what was I gonna say? I'm distracted by his abs in my head now again. <laughs> gosh can you imagine I mean this is this is us now can you imagine us as like can you imagine me and like all my friends as like teenagers wow. we were obsessed that's why I'm so jealous like I just had like David Boreanaz on my wall when I should have been having this guy oh, like... angel. <laughs> yeah. I mean literally it's like Hrithik and then Jareth from Labyrinth yes! <laughs> on that level oh man genuinely genuinely 
Um, and this is probably a lot healthier than Jared. <laughs> oh, because she's legal, because she's of legal age. That might help as well. It's legal, because like, yeah, just- He doesn't all... have to steal her brother. Yeah, you know. no kidnappers involved. Just uh, stealing, mutual. just crime, just heist, just robbery. Just normal crime. Um, no, uh, you're right. I think if, what would suck as well is if he came over to Hollywood, you know for a fact he would be put in this sort of like tech geek, role that's mm. like minor in a big movie and he wouldn't have the chance to showcase his range and he wouldn't have the opportunity to like be given a, a leading role anytime soon and like you just know that that would happen and it would really suck because that's what often happens when we like import as it were mm. actors in who are like the height of their game where they are and we're just like mm, yeah you can be like the minor character in the corner you're welcome and it's like brilliant as it's like true but way. time has changed but times are changing though because if you look at people like Priyanka Chopra who have done incredible work both here and still maintaining That's in true. Bollywood I mean you know we are getting this change thank god in the industry of representation and sort of embracing that you know the the east is an, an other it's just different yeah and it's just it's something that we can embrace and that things we can learn from it and you know I do think there will be a day where we do see a lot more Bollywood actors maybe crossing over because again the talent is there yeah. and you know the ethic is there I mean I mean if you want to wear like Bollywood stars they probably do twice as many films in a year for the most part than um than Hollywood actors do you know there's definitely room to cross over there and I think they will but I think as well they don't need to and they don't want to like that's one thing like yeah. Ashwari Rai has done a lot of western films and I think everything has done a couple as well but the thing is just you know Bollywood the input is more you get to do more films you get to which means you get to explore more characters and develop your craft as an yeah. actor you know and it's just you know it's the biggest industry in the world Literally. it's not it's not there's nothing but... to be jealous of over in Hollywood like they yeah. have a brilliant brilliant uh industry where they are yeah you're absolutely right exactly. but it's beautiful but that's the wonderful but I do think we will see more crossover but I mm. think you know that's the way the world is going thank god it yeah. only took <laughs> how many years have been filming around for like a hundred years it only took a hundred years <laughs> and like, yeah, like years a to get that panther brilliant. we just sort ourselves out why this film podcast really brings up nostalgia for most of us. And speaking of nostalgia, have you ever wondered what your mom was like before you were born? Have you ever asked her questions like, what were you afraid of as a kid? Or if you could choose your last words to me, mom, what would they be? These are big and small questions and ones you might not really think about until you can't ask them anymore. Hi, I'm Melissa, huge fan of why this film podcast. And I'm bringing all this up because after losing my mom unexpectedly, I realized how many things about her life and opinions and our family I didn't know or just didn't remember. So instead of just sitting on my pity pot, I wrote a journaling book that I can fill out for my daughters and you and your mom can fill out. It's called Questions You'll Wish You Asked, a time capsule journal for mothers and daughters. The book is available on Amazon or you can call your local bookstore and ask them to order it for you. Ask those questions, write down your answers. Your future self will thank you, I promise. yeah oh god I just I just really really loved it like yeah. I really had a great time and I really want to like show it to my friends and be like can we watch this movie because genuinely it's so much fun and like um it was really interesting I found because I the first the opening scene is in English so I was like mm. oh is this movie gonna be spoken in English okay um but then the second scene started and I had to like find my remote and be like, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> ah! Cause it, they were talking, talking, talking. And I was suddenly like, I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> it took me a long time. Um, Cause I was, I was getting the gist of it, but then I was like, no, I need to know what they're saying. Um, so I put the subtitles on and like similar to Ligan, I believe this happened. They'll, they'll switch and Every now and then they'll say a line in English and yes. the subtitles will be different to what they're saying in English, which again says to me that what I'm reading is not really what they're saying. So I wonder how different the intentions are. And it's just another reason that if I were to ever mm. be given a superpower, it would be to know every language in the world. And I really found it interesting when they went over to Rio and the twin sister 
couldn't speak to Jay because he was, was he speaking Hindi? He was speaking Hindi, yeah. Whereas Ali was speaking... I think they were, I think they were both speaking Hindi. I think they were both speaking Hindi from what I gather. I think the thing is, I think that was just part of the joke of it. Is that, right, right, right. You know, Jay is very kind of, and Ali is a lot more, and Ali's a lot more physical as well. So they were able to communicate like that. And there are, you know, I think again, there is this idea of like them speaking English and sort of understanding one another and sort of having that connection. Yeah. The connection of love that transcends languages. Like if we can accept it in Pocahontas, we can accept oh, it. Oh, of course. Like how she randomly starts speaking English to John Smith. Because <laughs> the leaves helped her out. <laughs> of course. She can paint with the colours of doom. <laughs> Perfect. Literally. But yeah, and that was just really interesting how she was like, you know, I've it's so lovely to have you here in Brazil because I've not lost touch with my own culture, but I'm not mm. using, you know, I've been surrounded by Brazilians. <laughs> incredibly hot Brazilian models <laughs> yeah. because that's all Brazil is apparently yeah that's movie. what Brazil is um so again it was already there was a really mm. lovely mixture of like I love watching a movie where there's a mixture of uh languages anyway like I loved when I went mm. to see Warhorse on stage and they they do they insist that all the German spe- scenes are spoken in German and all the French mm. scenes are spoken in French and there are no subtitles because you're on stage but you're like yes this is good like this is how it should be this is good for us um, and so it's always really lovely watching these movies where they're flipping in between. And I read somewhere that Sweetie uh, Rimi Sen had to be dubbed over for a different, like how many, I mean, is that a um, question that's going to lead to a million answers? How many languages are there? There's loads in India. I mean, yeah. I, I love, because remember as well, because at the moment we're mainly talking about Doom, which is a Hindi film, but these films get dubbed over in Tamil. <laughs> uh, some get dubbed in Punjabi and Gujarati. Like there's, there's hundreds of Indian languages, you know? So yeah. that's the beauty of it is that it can really translate to any culture and to any kind of, um, any kind of system. So yeah, a lot of the songs, uh, a lot of the movies get dubbed in Tamil. Um, a couple get, and uh, there's also Urdu as well, which is spoken in Pakistan as well. So you get, but that, so, you know, there is that kind of rich influx of, yeah different languages and culture it's but that's so what... fascinating and we should we should know more about it I'm so ignorant to it like if like you know I think yeah I'm just I'm genuinely so ignorant to it I'm always just like Asia <laughs> <laughs> and I really general Asia more. yeah like that way because I don't want to say that some, like because we used to say Indian and then someone at some point I think was like no you need to say like Asian because they might not specifically be from India and Asia is just like Hong Kong and Japan um but I yeah and then you talk about all these different languages and like because we don't really have that especially over here in the UK we're so mm, pathetic and and (laughs) terrible well we do have other languages we just don't explore them like we have like Scottish and Gaelic and all and Irish and all these other things we just and and Cornish but we don't ever fully embrace them and we should because you know it adds to the rich tapestry of our culture and it makes the UK feel very lived in like I've often observed with British film that it's a very kind of set idea of what British life is like and thank again thank god that it's sort of evolving with Netflix and everything but like you know this idea that we all live in London Mm -hmm. which is kind of biased because I do live in London (laughs) you know we live in London and you yeah. know we all have like these either tiny apartments or these gargantuan houses and yeah you know it's there's not really other. much outside of it yeah. but I, but that's the wonderful thing is that with with films like them too they do reach out to everybody and they do access make it accessible to everybody so everyone can kind of get in on it and it feels like a lived in movie like it's it's their movie it's their mm-hmm. world it's their culture out there and it bridges the gap mm-hmm. And if we did that in the UK, I think it'd be brilliant. Oh, it'd be so much better. There's so mu- there's such a rich, you know, people are obsessed with the UK because we have such a history. It goes back yeah. years and years and years. And we're always just like, as you say, like, eh, London. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, like I live in Suffolk um, and I am trying to write plays and films that look at the history specifically of that and like we have our own language that's like dead now that only like a few people and your own culture and your own culture like it it may not be you know a huge shift from culture in London but it's a culture and it's yours and it's a lived in world and it deserves to be told on screen Mm -hmm. it's completely that's to be told on screen um so yeah thank god for things like Netflix for allowing like this type of thing to be greenlit and put forward and experimented with and of course for just 
they keep piling on like Bollywood movies and French movies and all of these different countries that do really fine works of cinema that like uh, the main movie going audience, if they're just looking at like the top 10 cinematic releases wouldn't, I mean, we saw the outcry last year when best picture winner was not American or English. Um, and, <gasps> but Parasite was like, it. Oh my God. And you know, the director so said good. something in his Oscar speech that was really profound. It's like, once you get over your lack of, uh, once you get over reading subtitles, a whole new world explore, is Genu- explored. Is explored. And I think our generation will be the ones that do that. I mean, yeah. for sure. I mean, the number one, I think it's either number one or number two uh, uh, series currently on Netflix is Lupin, which is a Lupin, which is a uh, French film. Oh, which amazing. Is a French film, you know, so I think we have, to, I think, I feel like the change is inevitable. Yeah. It's I feel like it has to be because if we're going to continue to be artists in our industry and be an industry that's dedicated to telling the truth in the manner of the genre, the truth is there is so much in the world to explore and yeah. everyone's story is unique and no one's got a homogenous experience. So yeah. we need to, we need For to sure. expand and we will. I mean, you're watching a Bollywood film, and I you know, bloody loved it and you bloody loved it. <laughs> And now you can go watch a Brazilian one or a French one or go watch a Tamil film because the Tamil films are different as well. So, you know, yeah. expand that beautiful mind and, yes. you know, it will inspire you. It will inspire you. It will. Like, that's the one thing I I thank God every day that I was blessed to be mixed and live in London and have the cultures around me that I did because it opened my eyes to the fact that there is no one way to do things yeah. and it fueled my creativity and it fuels my imagination as an actor and as an artist. Yeah. And that's what we need to go forward absolutely yes bravo yes like (laughs) amazing yes when I was a kid I think I was always like I want to make sure that I marry someone like foreign so my kids know more than one language and have access to more than one like do you know what drove me crazy is so (laughs) for people on the podcast who don't know Emily and I first met because we worked at Kidsania (laughs) <laughs> for like three days <laughs> for like three days um but what I loved was that it was such we had such an international team but the thing that really got to me is that we were the only ones who spoke all the English people could only speak English but like the people from like Portugal he spoke like French and Spanish and Portuguese and like somebody else could speak like three other languages and it's like we are so lacking in that department in the yes. UK it's yeah. quite shocking and it's kind of arrogant because it's we- so arrogant and it's it's a fall over from the the whole empire that's still a thing yeah. and once that generation dies hopefully we can all just like apologize profusely to the entire world about being massive knobheads rejoin <laughs> europe and just be like let's get mandarin in our schools let's get spanish in our schools absolutely absolutely like if we're going to continue especially because of everything that's happened with brexit and everything if the uk is going to continue to be a power player we have to acknowledge like we said that the world is becoming more globalized and we have to acknowledge that you know especially with like the rise of china and india and all these other countries that we do need to make a conscious effort to assimilate and not just view ourselves as the proud island and I'm saying that as I, I I love the fact that I'm British and I love the fact that I'm from the UK you know but we could be doing more but we have to grow that's the yeah. only real solution you have to grow and it's either and really at this point it's like assimilate or get left behind mm-hmm. all we can do is educate and yeah use Netflix to watch more stuff from different places and I mean the moral is Netflix will change the world <laughs> literally I genuinely think like <laughs> It is. That's a YouTube video waiting to happen. Netflix oh my god! Well. well, there was a joke in Parks and Recreation that was set. I think it's like 2027. It's like all the major conglomerates of the world are now like one unified company, and it's like McDonald's and Taco Bell and Disney are all <laughs> one company. And I'm like, <laughs> it's probably gonna go that way. It's coming. Disney pretty much own everything except McDonald's and Starbucks at the moment. But give it time. They they owned McDonald's in the 90s because they had a contract with them which is why all of the plastic toys you got from McDonald's were all Disney. Um, But yeah, anything else about Doom 2? I'm going to just check my notes. It's magical. It's mystical. It's everything you want in life. You really should try and get, we were talking about it before the show about doing a Bollywood remix of the theme song. I really think you should. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, having watched Doom 2 now and comparing it to Lagan, like what is your... What is your takeaway about, I guess, Indian cinema and just the kind of the breadth of it? Like, what would you, what do you want to see kind of as a consumer of film and as an actress and an artist yourself? What do you want to see kind of going forward in terms of, you know, just what you experience with Indian cinema and just what you want to see in global cinema? Like, what do you want to see going forward? Wow, good question. 
genuinely the two of them are side by side in terms of what I got out of them I really loved seeing um, a part of my own country's history through the eyes of the country that we were essentially oppressing like mm. um, and seeing their beautiful country um, shown off by them and like that was so enjoyable and the historical aspect was so fascinating to me um, mm. that was gorgeous this was so much fun it's like the type of movie that I think if something came out like this in the cinema with that sort of uh, synopsis and genre I would be like ew no like it just won't be good and this was so good like because mm. it was Bollywood mm. so I guess going forward I am genuinely up for like anything I think like it, they just mm. they've proven already that they have such a ridiculous range um such an amazing breadth of ability to put out in cinema and it's all always going to have these song and dance numbers which I'm obsessed with and so really like I'm probably yeah just going to go through the actors IMDb pages and like see mm. what's on Netflix and just see what they've got and I can't imagine that there's going to be a dud movie because what will be recommended will be ones that are so high up anyway chances are mm. um that you're inevitably going to see incredible things so I would love to see something completely different to the previous two mm. things I've just seen and like what they do with that um just just more like maybe I'll go back and revisit Bride and Prejudice and like yeah that why not now. because that's still an experience I mean it's directed by a British Indian woman but that's still a woman bringing her experience and you know like you said making sure that every person's experience whether they're, they're actually in India or they're British Indian or American Indian or Indian American or whatever gets fully realized and I think the great thing about having seen the spectrum you've seen already with Lagan and now them too is you're really getting a sense of you know the way different Indians see India and that you know them too is kind of a representation of at least at the time because those outfits are very 2000 oh, they're so the, ugly, 2000. the mini skirts yes. the lip gloss all of it and I live through <laughs> it you know it is kind of a representation of you know contemporary India and what contemporary India is at the time you know yeah there's the culture of Lagan and you know there is still you know the, the village culture and everything but, but there's also a commercial culture and a contemporary culture which is very accessible to you and very similar to the west mm -hmm. but is still maintaining its sense of authenticity and integrity yeah so i'm i mean i'm just really happy that you liked it because you know I like really i said it agree. furthers the dialogue about inclusion yeah and i'm just i'm so happy you liked it i really really and am i would love to get further back in the history of bollywood and see ones that are perhaps less um influenced by western ideals or trying mm. to reach certain audiences like really see what like classic bollywood was like which like mother india is a really good one for that yeah. mother india brilliant movie brilliant movie absolutely brilliant it's a, it's a culture driven by emotion and that's yeah. beautiful yeah beautiful thank you so much for choosing this movie like it's just been such a joy like it and now you have a new crush and now oh you have a new crush. God. I'm going to go straight to the printer and just <laughs> print out millions of photographs of this man and put them all around my room. Gorgeous. Like he is going to have like a whole week of Instagram marketing dedicated to his face. Like he is just... Because doesn't your heart just break for him? Like when he <sighs> realises that she's betrayed him and he's in like the, like the clown costume and then he's looking at her in the song, like I will literally, like my heart is broken. And then he's crying and it's just like... <sighs> <gasps> oh my god what a man he's like so sensitive and understanding but so athletic and such a good dancer that's another thing I was gonna say like I don't think it's much a thing anymore but I know especially when we were growing up there was this whole thing around like oh dancing for boys is like sissy or whatever and it's like pathetic and it's not manly and it's like mm -hmm. it is the most manly thing you can do watching that Absolutely. man dance is and I mean, I think Magic Mike maybe <laughs> introduced that as a concept more over here to be like, yeah, yeah, actually, like, I think you'll find it's great. Um, but genuinely, like, you're already in love with him and then he starts dancing and there is nothing cooler or sexier than a man that can dance. Except to guess a man who can, like, steal your heart and disguise himself, <laughs> like, Still in the museum. Like, oh, my <laughs> gosh. And that's another thing, like just this actor's range within this character of every yeah. time he showed up in a different disguise and his mannerisms and his like 
a, like willingness to be like goofy because he's in disguise in public and like just really great and like there was that brilliant shot where he was walking towards Jay and he was like flashing through all the costumes that he'd been in throughout the movie and I was just like this is so good and the amount of his model portfolio yeah, yeah literally <laughs> like <laughs> and um there was like a an initial conversation between him and Jay that felt very like die hard when Hans and John McClane like meet yes the, the tension there no. And a little bit of like, I got a little bit of like sexual tension there. I don't yes. know if that was just me, but a lot of yeah. like sexual tension. And I think it's just this man, Lord. this um, Hirithiki, blah, blah, blah. With the Russian. Yes. R- so do you not pronounce the H at the beginning? Uh, with the, I, oh, Hirithik. Oh, I don't, I just say Hirithik. Hirithik Russian. Russian. Hirithik. So gorgeous. Uh, I think I think just I, inevitably whoever's acting alongside him has some tension because how could you not like <laughs> well the thing is and like you said with masculinity is that you know what is masculinity you know and completely we're kind of deconstructing that all the time about being sensitive and being you know being athletic and proud but Bollywood was doing that for years yeah. so it's just kind of funny again it's the idea of like again it's sort of the western ingrained arrogance is that it took ages to catch up to that sense that you know dance is is for everybody and being beautiful and being vulnerable is what makes us human exactly, and there's no yeah. need to be ashamed of that for yes. sure for sure oh my god you're coming back on so you better yeah. get some films oh I already have up. one in mind girl. oh good because <laughs> <laughs> this was this has been so much fun like so much fun it has been as well it's just lovely also to see you as well like I said I'm yes. so happy for you and just everything you're achieving in this podcast and I just I know that like God is gonna take you to like some crazy places girl like oh I cannot gosh. wait to see where you go like you are gonna do incredible things oh thank you so much that really means a lot to me like <laughs> just lifted and motivated now it's amazing I'm so excited I'm so excited for you as well once this pandemic is over and you can like get back into proper swing of actor you're gonna be you're gonna walk into a room and light the place up and they're gonna be like amen i receive it literally you're an absolute delight you genuinely are so are you so lovely do you have anything to plug i know there's not much going on at the moment but do you have anything that we can um, to? just follow me on instagram at ni robson or on facebook with my name naomi robson and yes keep posted because this is the year of greatness i don't know what tune that is i'm just gonna go with it it's your why tune not? it's my tune and like I'm just air applauding you because I'm so, so happy <laughs> to be on the show. I'm so happy to have you. And as I say, you're literally coming straight back. So like, yes, send me those movies. We'll get watching them. Again, happy that you got a, a different cultural experience. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Like genuinely, like I really didn't know what to expect. And every single time I am blown away and I have such an enjoyable time. So I yeah. don't know why I'm not just like watching Bollywood all the time. Do you know what it is? I think it's because they're always like two and a half hours long. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Like the garden was four hours. So bless <laughs> yeah. me. I think I had to do that in like a few sittings. Um, and I was like, oh, it's Bollywood. So it'll probably be like nine hours long. And it's only two and a half. But um, yeah, a, a thrill the whole way through as well. Thrill. Like just, you, I was never like checking the time. I was never no. like, oh God. Well, that's what the name actually means. Like doom, it's not actually like a word. It actually just means like excitement and no noise way. yeah that's what, it, that's what it means like it's not an actual defined word it just means like excitement it's oh why in the, in the movie you keep hearing doom, 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 yeah doom, i love that doom, doom. <laughs> that's a drinking game yes <laughs> that is a drinking game in oh itself my God. there are so many drinking games you could do to this movie i can drink imagine for, drink for every 2000s reference <laughs> drink every time everything russian you should should just be the only character in this film along with asmori Rai. god yes oh my god yeah i'm gonna google them and do them uh, with people because this was so much fun and it's on amazon prime so go and watch it steal a prime login from a friend go and watch it um but thank you so much thank you for coming on and we'll see you next time on why this film bye outro